In this screencast, we're going to talk about how to put um, first order processes into standard form. So all linear, non-homogeneous first order processes can be put into what was called standard form. At least this is the standard form that we're going to use in this class. So the standard form looks like this. You have a time constant, tau p, times your first order derivative dy dt plus the function y is equal to a constant kp times u of t. Now, in this case, you have your, um, your variable y is the output. Your variable u is the input to your process. The um, parameter here, tau p, is the time constant. And this parameter here, kp, is what is called the process gain. So if you have a first order process with an input u of t, then this is the differential equation that it will follow. And the way that you solve this differential equation will depend on what u of t looks like, how u changes with time, and what your value of your process gain and your time constant are. So for example, if you have some process and you have u of t being some flow rate, which can change as a function of time because of some actuator changing. So you have u of t as your input to your process, which may be some sort of feed flow rate. Now note, the input u of t to your process doesn't actually have to be an actual input stream into some tank. It could be um, some different variable, which is not an actual physical input to your tank. But as long as it can satisfy this part of your equation, then it's considered an input, right? So in this particular example, I've chosen u of t to be some feed flow rate, and y of t being some my output of my process being, let's say, a product stream temperature. That would be an example of. Um, what an input and an output could be. Now you've already seen an example of a first order um, non-homogeneous linear process. And that would be um, the example of the dynamics of an actuator. Now we can take the dynamics of this actuator and put it into standard form. So if we multiply through by tau v, then you have tau v, the time constant of your valve, times df dt. Then I, if I move f over to the left hand side, you get plus f equals to f spec on the other side. Now note that in this case, there is no um, process gain, or the value of your kp is equal to unity 1. Um, but that's not generally true. Now, for example, if you go back up here to um, maybe u of t being a feed flow rate and y of t being a product stream temperature, um, the value of kp cannot be 1 because you have two different um, units. We have flow rate on one side as an input and temperature on the other side as your output. And so kp has to at least um, serve as a unit conversion from u of t to y of t. But also kp will tell you how much a change in u of t will affect a change in y of t. So for example, um, your, uh, let's take a look at this example down here where we have some sort of step input in u. And I'm not telling you what, what the units of u are, but let's say that you have a value of u, which is right here, at um, time negative, and then at time t equals zero, you have a step input to u. As a response, your output variable y does this, suddenly um, takes on this sort of uh, trajectory, right? And so if your step input u of t looks like this, u of t equals to zero, time t less than zero, and some value a, a time t greater than and equal to 0, then if we solve our first order differential equation for this, we get y of t equals to a times kp times 1 minus e to the negative t over our time constant tau p. And so what we see is that um, you have some sort of exponential that decays over time, and your final value in the end for y of t, if, if y originally started at 0, is um, a times kp. And so the way that 
that this y changes from its initial value to its final value, if we call that delta y, and the way this value changes of u from its initial value to your fi its final value, if we call that delta u, then kp is going to tell you what that difference in change is going to be. And so kp ends up being not only a unit conversion from the units of your input to the units of your output, but also how much this delta u will affect your delta y in the end. Now, in addition to that example, sometimes we have an impulse input that we look at. So in this impulse input, we have your input being um, some sort of you know, pulse, or um, the technical uh, description of this is the Dirac delta function. So if your u of t is equal to some sort of amplitude times your Dirac delta function, which means at time t equals 0, there's just a, a infinitesimally fast spike in your input. Then if we solve our differential equation, we have y of t is equal to a times kp over tau p e to the minus t over tau p. And this would look like, in time, let's say here's time t equals 0 when the, the impulse happens. Here's a 0 value, which y was originally. Then all of a sudden, at time t equals 0, this, this infinitely strong spike input, it's infinitely strong, but it has an amplitude of a, <laughs> causes your y of t to jump up like that, and then it decays back exponentially, back to 0.